Waveboard can be used for many other things than audio control. Camera control is actually one of the things, but what about light waves? Today, I'll introduce you to our ArtNet device core that is designed to control lights via network. And for that, we have an ArtNet DMX node here. It is connected to our network in the one end and to the DMX inputs of a Rotolite Titan X1 lamp in the other. And using the faders on the waveboard, I can manipulate the intensity and the color of the lamps. So that's great. DMX is in itself pretty simple for better and worse. And setting up the waveboard to control the lights on the faders is extremely simple and straightforward in the most basic case. So this is all done inside of Reactor, the software you see in front of us here, which is living inside the waveboard. Reactor basically runs inside this device. Nothing else is needed for the waveboard to talk to the lamp through the DMX uh, node on the ethernet. On the one side, we have devices. So I have added the ArtNet DMX device. And if we qu uh, quickly look inside, it has an IP address. And then it's basically connected to the network. And over here, the waveboard has channel configuration. Right now, I have a channel um, with eight channels. And the way DMX works is that it has like numbered channels. And each of those channels will be assigned to a color, or to an intensity. So for this particular lamp, it turns out that on the first fader where I have the dimming action of the lamp, so this is where I can turn it on and off, essentially. Let's just keep it there. That is channel number one. Then I have the diffuser in the lamp. You can't see that on the video, but it is how, how straightforward and diffuse the light is. So just trust me on that. We have red, green, and blue. That is something you can see. So blue, green, red, that works out. I can also just give it a warm light and it has cool LEDs inside. So all these, that's five channels related to the color and then you have the dimming, which is like the overall dimming. And then over here, we also have a master fader that goes for all channels in the DMX universe, which is sometimes useful and sometimes problematic. But anyway, I just wanted to bring it in. But for the first seven channels you see, these have the numbers 1, 3, 7, 8, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we have the master down here, which is a different profile. Actually, one funny thing here is that you see in this list of configurations that we can assign to a channel, you see audio most of the time. Well, yeah, because the waveboard is mostly used for audio in our universe, but there's really nothing that keeps us from making a configuration for a channel on a, on an, an, uh, even in an audio context that would control light. So imagine that you had page uh, one here, page two, page three, all audio stuff. And on page four, you could have light. Or you could actually have the last two channels on each page being your lights. All that is possible by simply mixing and matching all these functions in here. So we have ArtNet DMX masters and we have channels. And for each one of these, you assign the device ID, which must match the device that you're controlling. So once again, if I had multiple of these nodes with different addresses, I could have them here having different device IDs and I would just um, address those. And the same is true for audio devices that I have in, um, in addition to. So <clears throat> where do I know those numbers from? Well, you will get into the user manual of your product. So this is a Rotolite Titan X1. And in this manual on page 36, here we basically have an overview of what the different channels, there is apparently 16 supported channels for this lamp, what they mean. And now maybe we begin to understand why we are skipping channel four or channel two, because on channel four, we have what is called mode select. That means the value that we could send to channel two or four with a fader would basically select which mode the lamp is in, which is probably not very useful to us. So this is why we are not mapping that down here. We are concentrating on number one, three, six, and so on. So let's see, one is master intensity, makes sense, right? Diffusion on number three, then we have red, green, blue, warm, and cool on the remaining six up to 10. Makes sense, right? And other lamps will have it differently. If you had two of these lamps, you would be able to configure the other lamp to start its channel numbering from say 17, for instance, and then 
17 would be the same as one here if you wanted to adjust the light intensity. Or I think you could have multiple lamps actually listening to the same channels. So in that sense, DMX is a very basic, very simple, and that is both good and bad. The, the, the good is that it's straightforward. The bad is that it is straightforward and sort of simplistic and it, it can be a lot of work setting it up, I suppose. So um, I will let that be up to you, but I just wanted to show you that we have this integration. If we go into the configuration of this one, those of you who know what this is all about will know that we have something called universes. We have up to like uh, 512 addresses in a universe we can use. So with having, uh, if we had like 20 or uh, 32 lamps, we would quickly run out of universes we could use. And um, then we have um, something called net or network in the context of Artnet. We have subnet and universe, which is uh, sometimes pooled together or separated as this uh, four bit number, which is again a way to sub address your, your universes and your lamps and whatever else you have in there. Then we have a, a few different modes. We also have a receiver, so we can also listen to DMX messages. In other words, inside of Reactor, we can take a DMX um, value into Reactor and we could actually use that to some to do something, which is for a totally different video. But just to let you know, Reactor could listen to a DMX channel and map that value range to audio control or to camera shading. It is possible. So there are, there's a number of things that we can do inside the device core here. Now that we have assigned five universes as a max number, then the parameter list is actually reflecting that. So if we look at the transmit, which is the, the parameter that sends the value between zero and 255, we see that there are five universes and 512 channels that we can address using this parameter with a value between zero and 255. Make sure that you like and subscribe, sign up for our newsletter and follow us on social media. Then you won't miss any news from Skahoy.